Hello guys and girls and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by DevTaps. This is the first tutorial on the UDK, which is the Unreal Development Kit. This is the latest version I'm loading up. There is a link to the um, website where you can download the executable as this is a free piece of software. Oh yes, entirely free. Um, yeah, there'll be a link in the description. So as you can see, we're just launching up here with a little splash screen. This is the latest version, which is the... Well, I've just come across all my screens. Let's just close that for now. Come back like that later. Right. Yeah, this is the March beta release. It's got a few new things in there. Um, so this in this tutorial, we'll be doing the boring bit, the very boring bit that everyone has to know. Yada yada yada. Basically, it's user interface, right? So if we start off at the top here and try and get this done over and quick as possible and as painless as possible. So um, here we've got file. We've got new, open, save current level, save as, save, save all, save all, write of all, and save levels force. New is obviously making a new file. Open is obviously the opening one. Saving current level is obviously saying you're saving your current file you've got open. Save as is saving as, so maybe you might want to change the extension or the name and keep the previous version that you had open. Save is literally just save over. Save all saves everything you've got open. Save all writable. Sometimes you can get things that are uh, read only. So if you have read only, files in there and you press save or come up with you can't save it, it's write read only, all, all the rest of it, so you click here save all writable, so you save only the writable levels and save all levels force, I'm not sure why you'd want to try and force it but I don't know, maybe we might find a use for that in later tutorials now, switch project, project switching this goes from editor, the uh, desktop editor to mobile editor, now as you may or may not know, um, UDK now has support for ISO 4.0, so you can get um, you can make iPhone and iPod touch applications in this. So that switches to your mobile editor. Import existing maps and new maps. Export all selected only. Obviously, they kind of speak for themselves. Favorites, you'd have favorites maybe working on a project where you need to keep moving back and forth between two particular files you can favour it so you don't have to keep going open, navigating to it and go blah 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 and recent obviously your recent files and exit will just close the program now edit, come under edit we've got undo, redo and these translate, rotate and scale widgets I'll show you in a minute and then you've got to actually show the transform widget Cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and delete all your sort of generic options for programs. And select none, select builder brush, select all, and invert selection, and select by property and find actors. Now, as I sort of go into a little bit more of the user interface here, these will sort of come clear to what they are. And viewing, we've got quite a lot here. We've got different browser windows. I'll show you the content browser in a minute, because that's also part of the user interface. Actor properties, surface properties, world properties. Um, obviously, if you've got an actor selected, which I'll show you in a second what an actor is, that bring up the properties of that, surface properties for surfaces and world properties for level properties basically. Kismet is the visual scripting system in, un in Unreal. Mane is the animation tool. Drag Grid is this here. So you can also access the options to it down here. This is the drag grid. As you can see, these squares will change as I go higher. So you can see that they've changed, make it smaller. And I'll tell you sort of like the best ones to use for your different uses. Rotation grid, exactly the same thing, but what happens when you rotate it. And the scale grid is exactly the same for when you're scaling. Um, auto save options, these are very useful because this program can have a tendency to crash crash and burn 
this program does sometimes, and if you don't auto save it, you will be very, very, very annoyed if you've done a spectacular piece of work. I have been well annoyed with that before. Translucent selection, that's handy if you're trying to, um, if you've got a very complex level and you want to try and select a certain thing, or maybe a uh, particle system that's in the sky that's currently transparent on the frame that you view it in, and or if you've got it in real time and it's moving, it's transparent and it's awkward to select, you lose you use this and you can select it easier. Um, don't worry about those two, all the rest of these really. But these will become clear when I do particle systems and other video tutorials. Floating viewports, right? If you've got a setup like mine where you've got more multiple screens, this is very handy if you're just working in UDK. Um, you might want your orthographic top view. You've got a fucking mad hatter downstairs somewhere. Um, so you've got your floating viewport. You can have this on another screen. Drag it over here. You can have the full screen if you like. It's very useful. Very nice and handy and easy to use. Get rid of that. Um, your configuration so it's 2x2 two two split at the moment as you can see full screen we'll put it in full screen lighting info will give you the results of lighting and stuff and all the rest of it and these are preferences best probably best left alone until you move into more advanced stuff now in the brush we've got all the different I won't go through these because they're all down the side here and I'll be doing that in a minute build they're all across the top so I'll do them in a minute as well Play, that's across the top as well, and tools. This is for creating new terrains and binary spaced partitions, and um, which is what BSP stands for, just to let you know. Prop buildings, they'll be covered on a later tutorial as well. And um, LOD is. Um, no, sorry. LID is something else I was thinking of. Don't worry about that right now. But and then you've got the help. So you've got the online help, the forms, and the setting up the swarm. The swarm agent will be will come clear. Um, in a later tutorial, I'll do actually I'll just do a little video tutorial, especially on that, as that's just like a little bit of an explanation you need for that. Um, as you can see, because we've got these files, new, open, all the rest of it. Um, Selecting your different widgets, your coordinate systems, uh, your finding actors, matinee, kismet, scale, clipping plane scale, translucent selections, um, rebuilding geometry and lighting paths, and cover nodes. And you've got a build all button there. You've also got a build light. You've got lighting quality, which is. Uh, you can set it to preview, medium, high, and production. Mm, preview is probably the best one to use. As you're going to be doing lots of editing and that. You don't want to be doing full production previews. Full production um, render, renders whilst you're working on it. And then you've got your sound, toggling real sound. Real time sound, sorry. And then you've got the starting levels and all the rest of it. Now, each of these win each of these windows have a set of uh, buttons here. If you click on the little da drop down, you can see all the different show things. So you can show paths, BFPs, builder brushes, decals, grids, lens flares, and then you can go into the different things. In fact, all of this more or less is just across the bottom here. Now you can change what type of viewport it is. So at the moment we're in perspective, which is 3D. Um, so if you click, mm, this, this is the top down view, which is the same as that one. Front, side, and back to perspective. Um, this is real time, you'll be seeing this in action very, very soon. You've got wireframes, your, your different views. I'll get a You'll be using those in later tutorials. They're just basically for viewing your lighting, lit, unlit, 
wireframes that can be useful for seeing the sort of um, com oh, what's the word? How it's all built up, basically. Um, and then you've got game view, which is that will actually help you. Got some content in here. You can lock the viewport so you can't move. If you lock the viewport, nothing happens. Actually, if you lock the viewport, nothing happens. It's helpful. Okay, so don't worry about that. That does nothing. As that's useful for when you're doing cameras and all that sort of thing. That locks the uh, vision to what the actor can see. And then this is for streaming volumes and post-process volumes and this is how quick you can move your camera so you can see it like that at the moment click that up click up again Wee, very fast and then this is for playing in viewports you play the game and you see nothing's happening you get a little game but I'm just falling through empty space at the moment and then we can maximise the viewport and tear it off The maximizing buttons just here. So down the side here, you've got different modes. Uh, camera mode is the default. Geometry mode, we'll be doing that brings up the geometry tools. We'll be doing tutorials on that, um, and we'll be doing two tutorials on these. So just quickly run through them. So I'm starting to run out of time. I think you'll find. Um, terrain editing mode. We've got here that's very editing terrain. Obviously, sort of speaks for itself. Aligning texture, so the texture alignment mode. Mesh paint mode, speak for itself, you're painting meshes. will be tutorials on all of these, Forget, don't forget. So if you kind of go, oh, he's not doing very well here, I'm doing it so you get a basic overview and you can look through my later tutorials for more information on each of these. Static mesh mode for editing. Static mesh is not sort of thing. And landscape mode, that's new in this version. And then we've got different builder brushes. So at the moment, you, the builder brush is this little red thing here, by the way, just to let you know. So at the moment, you've got the cube. We just bring this out of game mode. Well, I think we're in game mode anyway. Oh, well, just unlock it. Game mode, let me. Right. So, as you can see, if you click on that, you get a cone, you get a staircase, you get a cylinder, you get a normal staircase, you get a plane, you get a spiral staircase, you get a dihedrogen or whatever that is, sphere, and you also get cards. Now, CSG here. This is for adding it to the weld, so if you just click add and move that away, you can see there's a little build brush you can see there's a little blue brush there now. Let's change. And also subtract. See so that's a yellow brush. And you've also got intersect and de-intersect as well. They'll be covered in later tutorials. You've got volumes here. You've got loads of volumes. These will be covered in a later tutorial specialised on volumes. And you've got different select options here, show selected only and hide selected. So if I hide selected, you can see that that yellow brush has gone away. If I only show selected, you can see that I've only got that. Now if I invert the selection, that sort of speaks for itself, show all, and go to actor, which is the one that you've got selected and the builder brush which is actually what I have selected so um, as I said I've got 30 seconds left now bang 30 seconds right okay so that's it for this sort of boring horrible part of the tutorials that you have to do really just for everybody else that's new after all you can't blame them for being new you were new once don't forget so um, don't forget to rate comment and subscribe this has been a video tutorial by DevTouch
Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully see you very, very soon. Goodbye.